This is the time to get back to our senses, literally. Today I am going to speak about the unexplored potential of multisensory environment. Let me start. We human beings are sensory beings. Our children explore the environment using their senses. It could be vision, it could be auditory, it could be tactile. The nervous system of our children matured because of the sensory stimulation, especially in the first six years of life. Even after that, it's this moment to moment sensory stimulations on which our mood depends, on which our general well-being depends. And this is not something new. As back as 420 BC, Protagoras said that we are nothing but a bundle of sensation. Aristotle said that knowledge is gained through sensory stimulation. And we all know about the extensive work done by Maria Montessori in the field of sensory stimulation. What is multisensory environment? Or rather, what are multisensory environment? These are nothing special. These are just artificially created environment which can stimulate all the senses of the participant. It has to be safe, it has to be comfortable, it has to be demand free and most importantly it has to empower the participant by giving them self choice. For a second, for a second let's all of us imagine we are at a beach. Pick your favorite. It could be Goa, it could be Bali, it could be Bangkok. I can already see most of you are smiling and relaxing. And I am just using two of your senses, visual and auditory. That is the concept of multisensory environment. And today its applications have been diversified. It's been used in old age homes for people with Alzheimer's. It's been used as a therapy. It's been used in schools, it's been used in dental clinic. That's why the professionals gathered together at the IDEA forum to lay down some foundation such that the actual concept of multisensory environment is not lost and the positive outcome is maintained. So they said that multisensory environment can be used in people with disability, can be used in people with uh, sensory processing disorder, it can be beneficial for people even without disability. It helps in learning, relaxation and most importantly in managing anxiety. How many of you here are scared of the dentist? 30 to 40 percent are scared of the dentist in general. And I am Dr. Pramila Naidu. I am a pediatric dentist. So my job involves using sharp instrument in those tiny mouths. My job also involves using high speed drill in this tiny oral cavity of this tiny little being whose attitude I tell you is much more than mine. My job also involves giving them injections which would make them feel super weird and super numb and then expecting them to sit for a procedure which may take at least half an hour to 45 minutes. By now, all of you would already be imagining me something like this. But you know what is more challenging part of my job? My job involves making sure these children love dentistry. Making sure they are not scared of the dentist anymore. Making sure they have a good time when they visit the dentist. It also involves making sure they develop a very good relationship with their own oral cavity. And it also involves making sure the parents love me. Then only they will bring the children to my clinic, isn't it? So that is why we pediatric dentists are always in lookout for things that would make it easier for our little patients. It was Shafiro and his colleagues who first mentioned about multisensory environment or sensory adapted environment in a dental clinic. They said, if we could adjust the lighting a bit and general sensory stimulation which is usually present in a dental clinic, it would become easy for people with disability to handle the dental procedure. We stuck to it. So then in 2020, AAPD said that 
modifying the dental setup using a multisensory environment would help in relaxation and getting the desired behavior from the children. How does it work? Multisensory environment works by reducing the pain, reducing the anxiety and in general helping the child behave and manage the stress surrounded with the dental or the hospital environment better. I think it is just common sense. Let's have a look at what a child sees lying down in one of the best hospitals, even in one of the best hospitals lying down on the hospital bed. Let's say the child is lying down and seeing this day in and day out, doctors may be able to cure the child of the disease. But what about the healing from this experience? We dentists are no better. This is what a child sees from a dental chair. Bright light, white ceiling. To make things worse, our face and close up. Add some noises to it. How is the child supposed to feel relaxed in an environment and a sound like this? For a neurodiverse child or a child with sensory processing disorder, this bright light and this sound becomes even more overwhelming. Thus comes our multisensory environment to our rescue. This is what a child would see if the dental clinic is designed based on the concepts of multisensory environment. By design itself, it makes it easy. The lights are not too bright. The light intensity can be adjusted based on the child's need, making it inclusive, isn't it? The sound is soothing. Add a little bit of fragrance through automated room fresheners and you have a whole new setup. So basically what they do is multi-sensory environments in a dental setup provides the distraction so that the child's stress and anxiety is managed. So what we did in our dental clinic are these few things. We changed the flooring from hard, white, cold flooring that you see usually to an epidium or a rubber flooring. We provided uh, fiber optic lights which could be adjusted. We provided with an interior that is not only beautiful but it's also distractive to the child. The child can touch, feel and get the tactile stimulation that is required. Like I mentioned, the automated room freshener can be a game changer. It's just a simple room freshener that you can get anywhere and that removes the typical hospital smell or the dental clinic smell and of course the temperature is controlled. Other painful area are the waiting area. Now the child might have to wait in an area like this and hear all this sound either waiting for their vaccination, their appointment or when the child have come to visit someone close. But instead of that we can provide them with lovely play area which again is a multi-sensory environment which would help the child uh, you know use all their senses to enjoy the movement. It could be the artificial grass, it could be the tactile toys, it could be the sound or the fragments. My clinic is very small and this is all I could do but imagine having such a huge play area in a hospital with the area where a child can read, area where child can play and an area where child can participate in creative activity. Wouldn't it remove the fear from the medical and dental system? That is exactly what I'm looking at. And it's proven when the distraction is provided, the processing of pain signal is reduced. Let's widen and look beyond what can be done with multi-sensory environment. In a time when we are urbanizing, in a time where it is believed by 20, 50, 60 percent of us would be living in cities. In a time where all the play area and parks are disappearing. And in a time where UNICEF is already asking for a child friendly city. I think multi-sensory environment can play a significant role in every place that is associated with the child. It could be dental clinics and hospitals for sure, but it can also play a significant role in schools and apartments where when the child is getting overwhelmed with all the anxiety or the stress associated with daily life, the child can have his or her time. 
children are supposed to be playing outside. They are supposed to be playing in the sand pit, roaming in the parks, feeling the different textures of the stones and leaf that are present there. But it's not happening nowadays. Nowadays, the children are spending maximum time indoor. There is reduced opportunity for free play. There's increased visit to hospitals and the hospitalizations have surely increased over time. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the time we decide that we are not going to change our children for the world that we are creating purely out of our greed. I think we have to stop uh, telling our children, don't go out there, it's polluted. Don't play here, it's not safe. Stay inside, sit straight, sit for a longer time with your homework. It is time we change the world for what our children need. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time we get back to our senses. Thank you very much and have a good day.